day one prep of my brass is done. So there's, uh, it got a little messy, but there's 300, 200, 200, and 200. So 900 pieces of brass. Uh, I'll explain the story. I'm honestly exhausted, but I'll explain the story on the next part of the video about why I'm doing so much brass. The reality is out of the 900, I only need maybe six or 700. But since I had the brass, I forgot to prep it all because I didn't want to have to go back in the event that I need more. So what's been done to this? Well, we tumbled it. We annealed it. We decapped it. We sized it. We tumbled it again to get the lube off. And then came back over here and expanded it. And that's where it sits right now. So you can see on my checkoff cards... We've got decap, clean brass, anneal, resize, clean off lube, and expand neck. So we just have to trim, chamfer, deburr, and prime. That'll be tomorrow. And depending on how I feel after doing that, I'll probably start actually loading. And we will be using my um, amp press to do that. And we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, I'm exhausted. Uh, I've been working since, I don't know, 9 or 10 this morning. So anyway, uh, day one. There we go. Uh, yesterday was a long day, and honestly, I forgot to, to film when I was done. But uh, there's 300, 200, 200, and then uh, between that one and this one here, that was another 200 with that. So that's my 900. They have all now been primed. Uh, you can't really see that. Yeah, primed, chamfered, deburred, ready to load. And I got 900 ahead of me. Uh, basically, when this box is empty, and I've loaded six so far, but uh, when this box is empty, I'll be done today. Uh, I'm loading on my uh, auto trickler, and then I've got my amp press. So basically, as soon as that thing's done, well, usually by the time I get one on there, this one's almost done. So it's just sort of this you know, cyclical process here. And then you can see I've got my screen set up here, and I'll be sorting. Uh, you're probably wondering why aren't there any graphs over here if I already have six loaded here. Well, this was just my setup with getting my die set up and length and everything. And so it it, it made some different uh, graphs. So now I cleared it and I'm ready to actually do sorting. And that's why in here I've got my blue tape because that reminds me that these six uh, should only be used for blow off uh, kind of thing. And I'll probably actually use them before blow off like practice or whatever. But anyway, when I go to put them in my click it clams, uh, they're not to be part of the normal sort. But the other 94 that I load, I will then look at whatever the amp press. And I'll show you guys these graphs here and we'll pull out the oddities. Again, do I really think that the oddities have a massive effect on target? I really don't, just judging by some of the past testing I've done. But I will tell you that this, this process in general just gives me a lot more confidence in my rounds. And even though there may not be a massive difference in some of these high and low spike ones that you're going to see, I will tell you that putting them in my ciders or blow-off uh, boxes just gives me that much more confidence that everything that is in the middle is going to be a little bit better. And I saw that come through at Southwest uh, Nationals. So... You know, it's going to be a long day. Uh, this is probably going to be, you know, I load three or four rounds per minute. And I've got to load 600-something rounds. So you do the math. I'm going to be sitting here a while. So we'll check back in a little bit. All right. It's um, it's not super early, but it's early enough Monday morning. I'm flying out at like 7 a.m. tomorrow. And I didn't get everything done yesterday that I was hoping because, you know, life. So there's 500 that are done and uh, uh, I'm out here now working on, uh, I'm not going to do the remaining 400 because I don't need to. Uh, I really just need to get to, uh, I'd like to get to 800. We'll see. Um, I don't know. We will see. So uh, I've got a bunch of other stuff to do. I will show the packing. I've got uh, the amp press fired back up. I'm letting it warm. Uh, I forgot I turned that off. I don't really care about warming it up, but I do want to turn it on. And uh, we'll get these last 100 or 200 done. Uh, my expectation is, I think I had mentioned this, but I'd like to get uh, 
200 done for my Texas match, which is technically this week. And then I want to have um, maybe 450, I don't know, close to that for the V-squared match in the beginning of June. And, um, and I'll, I have to take it all with me. I don't have to, but I'm going to take it all with me to Texas and leave it with somebody. And they're going to bring it up to Tennessee so I don't have to ship it. And it's a whole thing because of airline carriers, and I'll get into that later. But uh, at this point, uh, we're going to try to get through these 200 right here. Uh, that'll get me to 700. And I think, you know, that's going to be pretty much what I need to be at. So anyway, back to the grind. I got 200 rounds left to load. I thought I would just do kind of a real world, not how fast can it go or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just, you know, what does it really look like when I'm loading up 100 rounds? And we are 700 rounds loaded and ready to go. It's actually probably like 694 or something. But anyway, basically 700 rounds. We are now going to take them one box at a time. I have all of my traces saved. Um, each box has its own set of traces. We're going to go through now and we're going to pull out the anomalies. I was honestly in a really big hurry last night to just get stuff loaded. I probably should have gone and just pulled these upside down while I had the boxes out. But... In my head, I was going to start doing a bunch of videos on each one and pulling them out. And, well, let's be honest, that just doesn't make sense today because I need to get all of that loaded up. I need to make sense of this mess. And, um, you know, I've got about eight hours to do it now. So, anyway, uh, we're going to go through. We're going to pull out the highs and lows from the finish side here. And then we're going to pull out anything that's weird on this initial seating force over here. Um you know, anything that's outside this normal, normal flow here. So there you go. Uh, I guess we'll check back when I'm a little more loaded up here.